welcome back in the previous steps we implemented the router and we implemented the navigation from the login page to the welcome page in this step let's do something called error handling why do we need the error handling let's go to a to do application and type in the url oops nothing is shown in here and that's not good right so somebody comes in types something and he does not know what's happening in here to prevent that we need to add in a error component cool how do we create an error component very similar to the welcome component right i can actually create a function component as well let's create a function component actually function error component and i'll say return diff an error occurred i don't know what to do contact support at a b c d e f g h i j k l okay cool i have the error component but it's not getting rendered why because we have not really tied it up to the router how do we tie it up to the router we need to define the route right so route over here we need to specify the path and we need to specify the component we know the component the component is error component when do we want to show the error component when none of these components match all that you need to do is leave this empty so you need to say route component is equal to error component and you can see it says an error occurred i don't know how, what to do contact support that so and so so if i do a proper url if i go to the login page even then i am seeing the error component if i go to the welcome page what would i see i'm again seeing the error component what's happening here the thing which is happening here is that more than one routes are getting matched and if we want to specify that at a point only one of one of these routes should match what we can do is we can introduce a switch so i'll say a switch slash switch where does the switch come from as expected the switch comes from the react router dom so what this switch ensures is at any point only one of these components is matched so if this root then this is shown if this root then this is shown else this specific thing is shown so now you'd see that when i type in a correct url it shows something error url it shows something else when i say login it shows the login page that's cool in this quick step we looked at adding the error component and a route for it and we added a switch to make sure that only one of these routes is active at any particular point in time i'm having a lot of fun i'm sure you are having a lot of fun too and i'll see you in the next step until then bye bye welcome back in the previous step we had coded in 28 minutes in the welcome component and that's not really good right how can we pass the fact that in 28 minutes has logged in from the login component to the welcome component how can we do that one of the options that we look at right now is by passing it as a parameter as part of your 
URL. So what we will do is we would want to add the name of who has logged in as a parameter, as a path parameter to the route. So what I have done now is added slash colon name. So what we would need to do is when we are redirecting to the welcome page, where are we redirecting to the welcome page? This is where we are redirecting to the welcome page. You would want to also add in the username. So how do we do that? Dollar open brace, colos brace and this. One of the important things is I can't use double quotes. I should use ticks. So if I use ticks, the value in the variable will be replaced in here. So the syntax is inside ticks. You need to use dollar and open brace, close brace and within that the variable. So what would happen now is the user would be redirected to slash welcome slash this dot username. Let's see it in action right now. Oops. The welcome does not work anymore because it's welcome slash something. So let's go to login in 28 minutes. Dummy and say login. And you can see welcome slash in 28 minutes. The thing is in 28 minutes here is hard coded value. It's not really the value which is coming as part of the parameters in here. How do we change it to use the parameter value? The parameters are also part of the props. So what we can do is this dot props dot there is something called match. Inside that there is something called params and the name of the parameter that we have configured is name. So this name should match with whatever we have configured as the thing in here. So let's see what would happen now. So welcome slash in 28 minutes. It says welcome in 28 minutes. Let's change this to something else. You can see that whatever we type in here is what the welcome text will start printing. In this quick step, we looked at one of the ways you can pass values from one component to another component that is by using the path parameters. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In the previous steps, we were focusing on routing. In this step, let's start creating the to-do component. We would want to create a to-do component and display a list of to-dos in there. What I'll start with is creating a list to-dos component. So above the welcome component, I'll say this is list to do's component list to do's component extends component and let's just start with the basic stuff right so let's just say list to do's how do I assign a URL to this I would need to go to the router and after the welcome component I'll put this in and this is list to do's component and the URL I'll assign to this is slash to do's. So when you go to slash to do's, you'd see the list to do's component. Does this work? Localhost 3000 slash to do's. Cool. I'm able to see the list to do's component. Now, what do you want to be able to do in the to do's component? Is to show the to do information. What I'll do to start with is I'll hard code the to do information. So we'll put some to do into this state and use that information to display the to do. So what I'll do is start with the constructor, um, as usual, constructor of props, 
we'll start with super of props that's kind of the basic thing that we do always and then we can have this this dot state is equal to and we'll start with creating a simple to do object so the simple to do object that we'll create is id is let's say one comma description i'll say is learn react so this is a simple object that i'm creating in here and putting it into a state now i can use that and create the view for the to do right so i can tell list to do's i'll say h1 is list to do's and over here oops, let's format it better so let's put it in parentheses so that we can actually format it in a better way oops okay cool so div and we have the h1 and over here i don't want to put the to do content right so the to do content let's say we would want to put it in a table let's say i'll start with a simple table we'll have a header row and inside this we would have a tr with the headers and i'll have a id actually inside the trs in the head you would have th slash th and let's say this says id and i'll have a description so we basically have the table header right now and let's quickly create the t body and inside the t body we have a tr and over here we'll have tds right so this is basically a simple table structure nothing complex about it so th id description and in the td what do we need to include is the values of the to do's how can i get the values of the to do's they are in this state right so all that i need to do is this dot state dot to do dot id and this dot state dot to do dot what do we have we said it's description description right so let's see what would happen with our page oops it says h1 is not defined why is it not defined i cannot use capital h1 we are in react jsx so we so h1 is an element so it's all small it's not a custom component let's see enough list to do's id description one and react that's cool so we have the basic to do thing we are able to now display one to do now how do we display a list of to do's we don't really want to do this once actually we want to do it for a list of to do's how can we do that let's add a list of to do's right now so into this state instead of having one to do what we need to do is have a array of to do's so how do we do that so i'll say to do's and let's create a list and right now we have to do's as a list you can have multiple to do's let's say your to do's are learn to dance become an expert at react and visit my home country visit india oops let me get this right visit india one of the important things is to have different ids right so one two three now what i would want to be able to do is to loop around the values and display them in here how can i do that right what i'll do is i'll copy this and go to the browser console i mean there's a compiler error that's sure 
let's not worry about it right now because this dot state dot to do does not exist right we change it to to do's that's not a problem we'll fix it i'll do a right click inspect go to the console and over here in the console i'll create a simple variable called list i'll say where to do's is equal to and paste in whatever we have copied so i'm creating this list of to do's in here so where to do's is equal to this thing so to do's now is a list javascript you can do a for each around this and you can define what to do with each to do so for each to do what i would want to do is i would want to do a console log how do we do that the way you can do that is by defining a arrow function in here so i'm saying take each element or actually take each to do and what you need to do is console dot log to do dot description so be careful with the syntax so to do's dot for each is caps and within parenthesis i'm defining this function so this arrow function to do take each to do and do a console dot log to do dot description what would happen it is printing the description of all these three what we would need to do in react whenever you would want to loop around the list and display them is something similar to this what we'll do is use something called a map function where you can actually map each of these to do's to something else so i can say map to do's dot map so for each to do map it to something else so i can say take each to do and map it to just the description of the to do so what would happen is this would print a array with only the descriptions i can take the to dos and map it to only ids to do dot id what would happen it prints only the ids so what we are doing is taking each of the individual elements and mapping it to something else or you can map it to something like this a combination of this as well so what we'll do now is something similar to what we are doing here with the map function if you look at this piece of code this tr should repeat for every to do so whatever code that we have in here actually what we would need to do is we would need to actually repeat this for all the to do so first thing i would do is i'm putting curly braces around this piece of thing in to indicate that this should repeat within the curly braces what we'll do is we would do the map so what we need to do is this dot state dot to do's dot map take each to do so what we would need to do is take each of the to do's so each to do and what should be returned for each of these to do's is this i'll tab this so for for each of the to do's what we need to do is not this dot state the to do variable is declared in here so that's what which needs to be picked up and return this specific element back so what happens is it will loop over to do's and it will generate this code for each of the to do's which is present in here so you can actually tab it out even further to make it very much more clear let's see what would happen now now you can see that the list to do's component displays both the id and the description in a 
table so you have the ids and the descriptions shown in the so all that we had to do was to actually do a to do's dot map and define an arrow function the arrow function represents how each of these elements should be shown so we define it for one to do and this is done for all the to do's in this step we took the first pass at the to do's component there is still work left to be done we we'll look at that in the subsequent steps we implemented the list to do page i mean it does not really look good right now but it's kind of basic stuff and also what we have right now functional is in 28 minutes when i enter dummy i go to login page i show the welcome page and from here we would want to be able to navigate to the to do page how can we do that we can add a link in here once we add the link what we also want to do is to add a few more attributes to the to do page we have id and description for the to do right now we, let's add the target date and is it completed fields as well we'll do those two things in this specific step let's get started with adding a link so you need to go to the welcome component and add the link in there right so let's go to the welcome component this is the div which is present in there and over here you can say you can manage your to do's what we want to do is we would want to change this to a link how can we add a link around it so what we want to do is we would want to actually do a link around it so we need to use something called link which also is defined in react router dom what happens if you actually define a a here let's try that so before link let's try defining an a and say i want to route to to do's and let's say a so a is typically uh, the usual html way of doing it oops i did not close it well so let's do that okay to do i would want to go to the welcome page and over here actually we need to pass the name so welcome slash in 28 minutes and over here if i click this link you would see that the entire page gets refreshed so you can see that the and complete page gets refreshed however you would see that when i go to go from login and only the entire page is not refreshed only this specific part of the page is refreshed you can actually clearly see this once we add the menu and the footer later for now the most important thing to note is the fact that when you actually add a normal a with a href what happens is the entire page gets refreshed and when you are doing single page applications you don't want the entire page to get refreshed and that's where link comes in so you can add a link where only that specific component will be replaced with whatever is pointed to by this specific component the attribute name is not href it's link to slash to do's and also let's import the link in so the link is also defined in the react router dom package so let's import that from there and if you go to the welcome page and you click here you can see the list to do page right now so what do we have done to add the link is working right now you might not be able to clearly see the difference that the link is making 
when we add the header when we add the menu in you'd be able to see this much more clearly for now let's focus on adding in more attributes to our to do so right now we have id and description in our to do let's add two more attributes done and target date so i'll just get the basic stuff ready so done false and the target date i would want to add for all of these for enough i'll say new date and let's copy this into all the other stuff so now we have the to do's ready with the new attributes let's use them in the display as well can i use them directly in here done target date does this work you can see an error it says objects are not valid as react child what we'll do for enough is we'll just do a two string for both of them so we'll just do a two string to get a string representation of that and represent both of these down what we forgot to do is to add in a th for these so i'll say is target date and i'll add another one saying is completed is completed and now you'd see that the page looks much better at a later point we'll work out a better way to represent the target date this looks a little clumsy for now but that's okay let's not really worry about it right now we have the complete flow design so we have from the login page in 28 minutes dummy login you can go to the to do page so we have the complete flow designed so what we'll do in the subsequent steps is focus on the view to the look and feel we'll add a menu we'll add a footer we'll make this the body of the page and we'll do all that kind of fun stuff so in the next few steps we'll shift our attention to making our page look better i'll see you in the next step until then bye bye welcome back from this step let's start making the screens look better we have a few pages now let's start using css to make them better we'll use a framework called bootstrap bootstrap is one of the most popular ui frameworks to style your pages we'll use bootstrap to make our pages look better before we start with bootstrap let's add a header and footer to the pages what i'll do is i'll go to the to do app.jsx this is where we have the basic uh, app defined so this is where we have everything defined so we need to have a header and the footer right so what i'll do is i'll have a class header component extends component and let's say this would play the role of a header in the render what should i do simple right i just need to return let's create a simple div and return that back so let's say a div and header and let's have a hr as a separator that's cool let's also create a footer component i'll just copy paste this and let's call this footer component and for the footer let's have the hr or the horizontal rule first and then now i would want to use the header and the footer component on the page how can i do that the way i can do that is inside the router 
over here I'll include the header component and after this switch I would include the footer component cool let's see if the page has a header and footer yep we have a header we have the body and the footer so let's go to the login page and if I say dummy and login and here you can see that the header and footer remain static whereas the body of the content or body of the page keeps changing that's cool so we have the header body and we have a list of to do's that's awesome we'll now start adding in bootstrap if you search for bootstrap the first link will take you to the home page of bootstrap bootstrap is one of the most popular frameworks to style your pages one of the great things about bootstrap is once you use bootstrap properly your web pages would look good on the mobiles as well so if you use bootstrap properly you'd be building responsive websites one of the options that we have to get bootstrap into our project is to add a dependency on bootstrap what we'll do is we'll take a shortcut and i'll actually try and bring the direct css into our project what i would search for is bootstrap for unpackage unpackage is one of the content delivery networks so what we'll do is we will get bootstrap directly from there so if you search for bootstrap for unpackage it would take you through one of these links and over here click css and um, take bootstrap.main.css so copy this url now we would want to import that css into our project since we would be using bootstrap across the app i would actually create it directly in this host folder i'll say new file i'll call this bootstrap actually it's use small b bootstrap.css and what i'll do in here is i'll import the css from that url so what i'm doing is i'm taking the url and importing it down here so in, into the bootstrap.css file what i'll also do is in the app.js i would import the bootstrap.css in addition to the app.css i'll also in, include in the bootstrap.css file now as soon as you save and you go to the to-do application you'd see that the pages are much better formatted right now so if you go to login you'd see that there is a little bit more space between the elements the font size is a little bigger all that is coming in because of bootstrap so let's say dummy login and here so the pages look a little better than what we they were earlier but we still are yet to make proper use of the bootstrap framework in the next couple of steps let's make use of the bootstrap framework and configure the header footer and also make sure that the pages look better i'll see you in the next step until then bye welcome back in the previous step we implemented the basic routing however when we go to login page and we enter username and password in 28 minutes dummy and click login i'm still showing just the login successful i'm not really redirecting to the welcome page in this step let's see how you can redirect 
to the welcome page. This is a very short step actually. So let's quickly do that. So what happens when I click the login button? Let's see what happens right now. Login component, login click this here. So when in 28 minutes and dummy, what we are saying is console.log successful. I don't really need this, I'll remove this. And we are saying set state show success message as true and has login failed as false. Actually, we don't really need to do all that. All that we need to do is to redirect to the welcome page. What is the URL to the welcome page? Slash welcome. Right. The way you can actually redirect to a welcome page in React using the router is by saying this dot props dot History dot push slash welcome. As simple as that. Once we redirect to the different components. We don't really need to update the state of the current component, so you can even comment this stuff out. So let's see what would happen in 28 minutes. Dummy and say login, it's actually asking. if you want to save the user ID and password, but it's redirecting to the welcome page. Now, you might be wondering, we have used this dot props dot history dot push, but where is this API coming? from and what else can I do with this right so if I do a search for react router history API you'd go in here so react router history API so history API is one of the dependencies for React Router. So we earlier uh, added a dependency for React Router. DOM, one of the dependencies for that is React Router. One of the dependencies for React Router is the history. API. So if you go in here, you'd have a little bit of documentation on what you can do. You can get the current location you can get the path name and
a little bit of other stuff and you can see all the other methods which are present in here as well we are using the push method There are methods called replace. You can actually go forward, go back, and all that stuff. Stuff. But to get the actual documentation of the history API, the best place to go. is the history package so if you click this link over here this would take you to the actual history package documentation and you can see that this is a javascript library which is meant to be used to manage session history the idea is irrespective of the environment irrespective of the kind of place where you are using this api you'd want to be able to manage the navigation History API works not only in the browser, but also for native applications. All this setup is done for us what we are really interested in is the methods which are present in the history object Great. so let's go a little bit down and if you go to the navigation you can see that there are uh, different methods which are present history dot push replace go go back go forward and all that stuff so history dot push is to go to the slash so once we do this we would go to the home page the other thing you can do with the push method is also add some state so i would want to go this go to this with this thing as this state so this object as this state you can also do a history dot go minus one to go back or the same thing you can achieve by using go back I would recommend you to spend some time with this documentation to understand the history API a little bit more I'll see you in the next step until then bye bye